Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the morning market review. It's Wednesday and it's the 27th of September. My name is Russell Shaw. I'm a senior market specialist at FXM. I want to draw your attention to my email address, rshaw at fxm.com. And um, if you need to correspond, that's the email address to use. Just going to go ahead and bring up the Disclaimers, we'll start off with the high-risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. One, two, three. Can you guys hear me? Is that better? Can you guys hear me? Has the has the volume come through? Oh, okay. All right. All right. I beg your pardon. Okay. Yeah. No worries. I can see there was something wrong with the headset. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Um. All right. So just going back to what I was saying, I, and I apologize that there was no sound. We've really spoken about the uh, the real yield. We've done it now for a, a fair amount of time. Um, 
And the question we've got to ask is how much higher can the yields really move? And the idea here is uh, when we take a look at it on a daily chart, well, we said yesterday that it's overbought, uh, which probably implies there is some sort of price ceiling. Nevertheless, they are moving in northeasterly direction and they are starting to butt. They are starting to really um, affect the risk market. The market mathematics, as interest rates rise, as real yields rise, they tend to have a, an effect on the risk side of the market, particularly the growth side of the, of the risk market. And um, uh, even if we take a look at this in terms of the weekly, even if we take a look at the terms of the weekly, you can see that the weekly RSI starting to move towards that overbought territory as well. And we've really, I think we've been on top of this from the beginning. Uh, the real re rates have been moving. They've been dollar supportive, and they've really um, hurt the risk side of the market. Now, that makes sense because we, one of the ways we can look at this is that as the risk side of the market starts taking strain, money moves towards the greenback, and the greenback uh, is uh, effectively a safe haven that money starts uh, flowing towards when the risk side of the market starts hurting take a look take a look at uh, this chart here this is the s p 500 okay this is the s p 500 and um, what you can see here with the s p 500 is the lower peak lower peak followed by a lower trough. That's a downtrend on the S&P 500. So as we move into the conclusion of the third quarter, as we head into the start of the fourth quarter, um, S&P 500 under strain, lower peak, lower trough. Take a look at the RSR. RSR has dipped below 50. And um, what we're looking at in terms of the 30-week moving average, a 30-week moving average acting as a support. But if the S&P 500's candlesticks drop below, they dip below that 30-week um, exponential moving average, and then the exponential moving average turns down, well, that would be a bearish development as well. This is quite worrying. This is very worrying. A lower peak followed by a lower trough. Um, that is the def definition of a downtrend, and it's not on um, a, a daily time frame. This is on a weekly time frame. So we are starting to uh, really see a, a weakness in the markets. Why are we starting to see a weakness in the markets? Because rates, real rates are moving higher. And the question is, how much higher can real rates go? The higher real rates go, the more pressure is going to be applied. And what we can do is we can monitor this um, downtrend using this trend line. In other words, we're now looking at the momentum of the S&P 500's downtrend, and um, we need to get above the downslope peak trend line to suggest that the momentum of the downtrend is starting to wane, right? So S&P 500, that's not looking too good as we enter into, as we start the fourth quarter. And the fourth quarter starts next week, right? Take a look. Take a look at the, we took a look at the DAX today. So this is the, the US side of the market. Let's take a look at the European side of the market. Let's take a look at DAX, which we did explore yesterday. All right, here is, here is the DAX. DAX is in a worse position than the S&P 500. The lower peak followed by the lower trough. The RSI below 50. So we're now on the very side of the momentum indicator. And we're now also below that 30 week moving average and that 30 week moving average starting to move down. Okay, so now we're seeing pressure on the US side of the equity market and we're seeing it on the European side 
in terms of equity markets. I just got a question here from Indran. Indra is just uh, asking for clarification on what the real uh, the real uh, yield is. Uh, let me just bring that up once more. It's the ten year. If you look what we're looking looking at here, Indra. It's the ten year minus what we call the break even rate. In other words, uh, what we're looking at is uh, let me do it on Microsoft Paint. Okay, I'm just bringing up Microsoft Paint. Now, what we do, what we know as individuals is we usually know of what's called the nominal yield. If we go into the, uh, if we go into the bank and we ask what interest rate are we getting, they're going to quote us a nominal yield. The nominal yield is the real yield plus an inflation adjustment, okay? It's an inflation adjustment. That's what the nominal yield is. So now we just use algebra, Indrin. So what would the real yield be? Okay, real yield will equal nominal minus inflation adjustment, right? In other words, what the real yield is doing is it's taking it's taking a look at inflation and we're seeing if it's um, if it's above zero, take take a look here. It's at 2.18. It means after our inflation adjustment, after our inflation adjustment, there still is some um, yield after that. There's yield left after the inflation adjustment. In other words, it's quite constrictive. It's quite constrictive because um, even after adjusting for um, interest rates, yields are moving higher. Even after, this is very important, even after the interest rate, um, sorry, even after the inflation adjustment, uh, real rates are still restrictive. Does that make sense, uh, Indrin? Okay, so what we're doing is we're adjusting for um, inflation. And the higher the real rates go, the more restrictive, you know, the more restrictive it's going to be on the risk side of the market. And uh, what we can see is that the uh, DAX really starting to feel the pinch now, just as the S&P 500 is starting to feel the pinch as well. Let's just take a look at UK 100. So we take a look at the, uh, the UK, the FTSE. FTSE 100, let's just take a look and see what um, kind of technical pattern we're getting with the UK 100. Um, now, this is interesting. It's the UK 100 actually looking to break above. So there was, there was some weakness. We had a lower peak here. Uh, it wasn't quite in downtrend, um, so we've got this sort of triangular pattern, and uh, the UK 100 uh, breaking to the upside. This is interesting. It's because of what makes up the FTSE 100. What makes up the FTSE 100 is um, it's got a heavy weighting towards a heavy weighting towards commodities and we've seen the oil price move up and uh, uh, as commodity prices start moving up 5100 actually is a beneficiary of that um, so a different makeup in terms of the index and uh, that's what's uh, driving FTSE so let's just reiterate we've seen the is pressure on the S&P 500 side there is pressure on the DAX side, UK 100 seems to be holding itself. Um, let's take a look at the all important growth side of the market, the NASDAQ. Let's have the NASDAQ. Remember, this is all a result of higher, uh, higher uh, uh, real rates. So let's just go through to NASDAQ, see what we can gain. Okay, just bear with me while we while the Nasdaq uh, comes up. 
Now we, we've got a problem here with NASDAQ as well. Okay. Peak, peak, trough. Okay, lower peak. And now here's the lower trough. So now we've got a downtrend on the NASDAQ. So again, we enter into the fourth quarter and the markets are looking poor. What's happening with the what's happening with the momentum? The momentum has crossed. It's dipped below 50. The longer we stay below 50, the uh, greater uh, the, the greater the pressure that's going to be felt by the Nasdaq. So we really need to see um, some sort of respite when it comes to the real rates. The whole question, listen to the question which we pose. The question is, how much higher can real rates go? Now, I think there is a price ceiling. I think there's a price ceiling. Why do I say I think there's a price ceiling? Because the RSI is starting to look overbought. The question is, if there is a respite, if there is a pullback, does that set up the platform for the next leg higher in real rates? And if there is the next leg higher in real rates, guess what? That's more pressure on the risk markets. That's more pressure on the risk markets. So we're going to have to monitor real rates here extremely carefully. Just one more chart to look at. Okay, just one more chart to look at. We've looked at the stock market. We've seen the risk side of the market. We've seen that they are showing signs of downtrend. We've seen that lower peak followed by that lower trough. Well, the flip side of that is, of course, the US dollar. The flip side of that is the US dollar. The US dollar at the moment is really the safe haven of choice. And um, as there is pressure, on the risk market, as people start uh, feeling fear in terms of the downtrends that are starting to manifest in the uh, stock markets, or well, where they where they shifting their money towards, and one of the one of the options is cash. One of the options is cash, and you can see that just as there is a downtrend on the risk side of the market, well, we've seen there's an uptrend on the safe haven side of the market and that's the dollar high trough followed by high peak we're above that 30-week moving average that 30-week moving average is moving up where's the momentum the momentum is on the positive side of the indicator so we've got this really risk off feeling that we have to deal with all right if there's any questions go just go ahead and pop those in um <laughs> uh, Raj just saying that the real rate is the uh, is the chart. Uh, I, I think that Raj, uh, you know, when we start off our analysis, uh, the the first chart we're going to start we look at the real rate. It's really driving markets at the moment. All right, there's no questions coming in. I'm going to conclude at this point because I'm going to shift through to the crypto minute on Wednesdays. We do the crypto minute. So uh, apologies that there was no sound at the beginning. I'm not sure what was going on with the headset. Um, have a really good day. Thank you, Raj. Have a good day yourself. Have a good evening. We shall chat tomorrow morning. Thanks very much, guys.